I rise today to speak to the proposed transportation budget before us today. I want to thank Chairman Maddock, Minority Vice Chair Peterson, and my fellow committee members for the hours they have invested in this budget process. Over the last several months, we've had the opportunity to talk with transportation experts and stakeholders representing our state's priority infrastructure needs. And we continue to hear the same three concerns. We need a significant new source of sustainable revenue and to fund, our, to fund our infrastructure needs. Two, we need to return funding to its intended purposes and to stop borrowing against our children's education. Three, and we need to safeguard revenue sharing to ensure the solvency and safety of our local municipalities. But I don't, but I don't think any of us needs an expert to tell us what we and the citizens across Michigan already know, that decades of disinvestment have left Michigan with some of the worst roads in the nation. And what we have before us today is not a plan to address Michigan's infrastructure needs. Instead, it seems like a bad version of Groundhog's Day. I fear this chamber is suffering from a collective amnesia because the refrain I keep hearing is that this plan is allocating a record amount of dedicated funds to the roads. But what we're really doing is playing a shell game with this budget. We take CTF, our Comprehensive Transportation Fund, dedicated for public transportation and move it. We take funds from rail operations and move it. Bridges, airports, welcome centers and move it. Clearly, we like to move it, move it. Because we're moving money from everywhere and still coming up short. It's just another attempt to fill our potholes with insults instead of asphalts, or, or, or better yet, overhaul it overall. For years, our legislature has struggled to take action to make Michigan's roads and bridges safe. Well, we finally run out of road on failed promises, half measures, and Band-Aid funding. We need new sources of sustainable revenue, not just cuts and funding from other budgets, to wholly and permanently improve Michigan's roads. We know that we need a significant sustained investment to get to the majority of our road to get the majority of our roads into good and fair condition within a decade. We know it because independent experts and task force across multiple administrations have all told us the same thing. And knowing all that, we're still looking at a proposal today that falls far, far short from raising, by raising only $542.5 million of the more than $2 billion needed to repair our state's deteriorating infrastructure. In addition, this budget proposes, slash, proposes to slash public transit programs and services, disproportionately affecting people with disability, the elderly, and low-income working people who we know are twice as likely to rely on public transportation for access to jobs and health and wellness appointments. Let me further break this down. This represents a 70% cut to special transportation services, and that reduction of 348,000 rides for seniors and people with disabilities. The inefficient cuts to successful programs like transportation to work and van pooling will have a negative impact on employment. Those who utilize these services have a 91% job retention rate, and the van pooling programs provides a 153% return on investment. This proposal gouges public transportation, transit investment and substitutes the incentive challenge fund that transit agencies could access if they create a plan to ensure 20% of their operations are funded by rider fares. It doesn't take a degree in economics to understand that under this proposal, those who use public transportation will see their fares go up. If you want to connect with a job, if you want to connect with education to get a better job, if you want to connect with health care, a lot of Michiganders depend on making the connection through public transportation. This plan represents just another tax on Michigan's working poor, elderly, and vulnerable citizens. The one-off proposals that res will result in selling off state-owned assets, including the Blue Water Bridge, eight welcome centers, four airports and rail services, 
trades what could be a long-term source of income for a relatively small one-time influx of cash that doesn't provide enough money to fix our infrastructure. And we've seen in other budgets this session, this proposal makes wholesale cuts from information technology, along with $21.3 in additional operation cuts for MDOT, which is self-defeating. It would actually result in the elimination of the very people who do all the work to line up and deliver the projects, and a resource I'm certain we'll need with the large volume of infrastructure projects our state is facing. Colleagues, this cut, these cuts put the very projects at risk we seek to undertake in our state. Sadly, what we have before us is not a plan that would adequately and responsibly help us reach our goals to fix the roads, bridges, infrastructure, and transportation. Instead, it's a move it, move it hustle on a balance sheet that represents another disinvestment in Michigan's future that is already having a rippling effect across other areas of our budget. We owe it to the people of Michigan to not repeat the mistakes of the past and to make the tough choices today to fix our transportation and infrastructure problems. It's time to make the tough calls and to put together a budget that truly prioritizes our infrastructure. It's time to do what the people of Michigan sent us here to do. So please join me in that work, and I urge my colleagues today to vote no. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.